good morning students uh, this is once again i welcome you back we were in the last class we were doing about discussing about chemical changes and reactions this chapter and if you have followed the videos and the materials i hope you will be able to understand or get things clear that we have already on the or rather standing on the verge of completing this chapter now in the last class only i told you that uh i'll be i will be discussing the exercises the question answers with you in the upcoming videos and upcoming lectures and as promised in this lecture i will be discussing about the question answers from this chapter chemical changes and reactions now if you are having any query in the in, in this week you have got ample time to go through the videos once again and uh, if you are having any queries any doubts you are most welcome to contact any teachers you feel like and uh, you can list down the uh, what should i say the problems your queries and uh, in an upcoming week or rather in the, I think the upcoming week or rather in this week only in the next class we will be again I'll go through a revision of what has been done till date that means the first and the second chapter I'll do a quick revision and after that I'll move on to the a fresh chapter all right so let's get started with the exercise of chapter Two, and before starting, I'll also like to tell you that um, probably I um, uh, I've given you as a homework the exercise of chapter one, but uh, maybe um, I have not I haven't given or rather discussed well, I'm not given I haven't discussed the question answers or the questions related to chapter one from the exercises of course. So that also will be taken care of. I assure you that uh, I'll discuss those questions so that uh, no questions remain untouched or any problems arise. However, from that, if you're still having any problem, you can send your queries to us for solving. All right. And moreover, <clears throat> after the discussion of the exercise, once we are already completing the chapter, please update your the exercises will be given as your homework and it's uh, your what should i say the homework will be to do it in your exercise books and please do submit your work to the teachers concerned your homework for checking all right it will not be a physical uh, checking as you can understand but uh, from uh, as I can tell you that the corrections will be made uh, in terms of that I can assume I, I can some uh, give you the list of uh, what should I say the um, problems the incorrect answers or uh, what the way of writing on all the stuff any points missing in a particular answer so it is uh, compulsory or it is uh, highly uh, required that you should after discuss and once the exercise is being discussed or the chapter is getting completed you should carry on or you should go ahead with your uh, completing the homework of the exercise okay so without wasting any more time I'll start with the exercise of the chapter 2 exercise 2 with the first one there are, as you can see it's 2a in this chapter there are total three exercises 2a 2b and 2c all the exercises will be discussed in this lecture all right okay the first question what's a chemical reaction as you can see the question is what is a chemical reaction the, this definition is clearly mentioned in your book on the very first page of the chapter that is chemical reaction it is what's the chemical reaction mixing of two substances mixing of two substances it can be elements or compounds 
to form new substance that's a new products whose chemical composition has been changed the properties has been changed and it has undergone a atomic reorientation or molecular reorientation or arrangement all right so uh, along with this you will uh, definitely you will be giving examples all right okay the next question uh, is a state of conditions necessary for a chemical change or reaction as uh, we have in the first lecture of this chapter if you go through that one i discussed over there or if you're having the definitely the pdf files will get uh, of the entire chapter has been given to you it's available over there it's available to you and over there you can find it out that the conditions necessary for a chemical reaction what are the conditions close contact is one of the conditions of a chemical reaction light that also brings out brings out of, our, of the chemical reaction catalyst then followed by heat this is one of the chemical uh, conditions for a chemical reaction so the, they are pretty co comprehensively if i'm not wrong sound this also brings out a chemical reaction so uh, almost there are five six points which are have been stated in your book and given in the chapter as the conditions necessary for a chemical change or a chemical reaction now over here one thing which has not been mentioned get uh, that is examples now in the first question also you can find it out it's uh, given that what is a chemical reaction it is not given that give supportive examples but as you know that examples most of the questions or many times it might it can happen that you may not get this question written or printed that you will be required or the question is, has been asked along with that you have to give a supporting example that may not be the situation as you can see over here but examples are must it's compulsory the second is the same thing is occurring with the um, the question number b that is state the conditions necessary for a chemical change or a reaction to take place now chemical change or a reaction to take place as the conditions we have already discussed just now we uh, we, did, we discussed about the chemical or other conditions we only stated the conditions but not the reaction so always so under so these sort of questions when you will be answering just get done one thing very clear that along with the conditions we will expect that each condition is supported by a possible uh, so it's supported by a prominent example suppose for example you were saying if you were saying stating that close contact is one of the condition of a chemical reaction give an example give a proper chemical reaction okay well let, let, let us consider let us consider close contact carbon plus sulfur it's a close contact carbon is a different element sulfur so when uh, when they're mixed together and probably and, and they're heated they form carbon disulfide so it's it's bringing out a chemical reaction the second uh, if you write catalyst it's a, a important condition for a chemical reaction so you should give a prominent example or a condition or a situation or a reaction where you are showing that yes this particular condition this particular reaction will be facilitated will be accelerated will will, will take place if this particular condition that, that means catalyst is present you, you, you may give the formation of ammonia that means Haber's process you may give the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide you may also give the example of potassium chloride decomposition heating of potassium chloride which gets accelerated by the presence of manganese dioxide so all these examples at least one one condition one example your answer will be foolproof clear all right now moving on to the next question that is the question given def define the following terms define the following terms it's chemical bond effervescence and precipitate now chemical bond once again it's given in your book it's basically the force of attraction what's a chemical bond the force of attraction that is existing between two atoms of a molecule well rather what should I do atoms of a molecule which are holding them together 
is called a chemical bond. I repeat, the force of attraction existing between the two atoms of or rather within a molecule which are holding the atoms together to form the molecule is called a chemical bond. All right? You may give an example of water is containing hydrogen and oxygen, two separate elements there, and the two separate elements, they're whole, they're rather, they're being held together by a bond. Okay? The next is effervescence. A beautiful definition is given in your book. The effervescence, what's the evolution of gas? What's gas? Now, evolution of gas is one of the criteria of a chemical reaction. The evolution of gas can take place under many such many circumstances. For example, if you heat many nitrate salts, it will lead to evolution of gas. But does it will it be called effervescence? No, of course not. Effervescence will be evolution of gas from a solution reaction mixture. That is, if the reaction mixture is a solution. It's in the aqueous phase or it's a solution state and under such conditions the reaction mixture is giving out a gas then that is called when reaction mixture is giving out gas when two substances are mixed together that is called effervescence a pretty simple example you can give that is calcium carbonate plus hcl hydrochloric acid it gives Calcium chloride, CaCl2, plus water, plus CO2. That is, CO2 is the carbon dioxide which comes out, evolves out, showing the effervescence. The next is a precipitate. Now, the precipitate, it's what you call as the insoluble substance present within a reaction medium once the reaction gets completed. It's not the insoluble substance before the reaction. Insoluble substance after the reaction. Once the reaction is over, if the solution mixture is containing an insoluble solid substance, then that is called as precipitate. Once again, example you can give, barium chloride plus sodium sulfate. It gives barium sulfate and sodium chloride. And of course, once again, I repeat, Whenever you're writing a reaction, it has to be balanced. Unbalanced reactions will not be accepted. It's totally wrong. All right? Okay. Moving on to the next question, that is, give an example of a reaction where the following are involved. Now, we have to give an example. That's heat. We'll give an example, for example, heating. I'll give an example of reaction copper heating copper carbonate you get copper oxide and carbon dioxide light you can write photosynthesis reaction or you can also write decomposition of silver salts or you can also write in the presence or for example uh, maybe uh, what should I say yes hydrogen peroxide so these are hydrogen peroxide decomposition in presence of light so Reactions. So one example we'll give it. Electricity. We'll pass electricity through water. We'll pass electricity through water, and uh, that is acid acidified water, which we know that normal water does not do not conduct pure water, do not conduct electricity, but acidify. For that reason, we add a little bit of acids to uh, uh, pure water to in order to electricity to pass through, and. Uh, Electricity, H2O giving H2 plus O2. So it breaks to form, it decomposes to form hydrogen and oxygen, individually separate elements. Close contact, you're going to write iron plus chlorine, which gives ferric chloride, close contact, carbon plus sulfur, carbon plus sulfide. So all these carbon plus oxygen giving carbon dioxide, so close contact. One of the reactions, and it has to be balanced, of course. Coming to the next, 
we are having solution example of solution so you can write uh, the previous you can go back one, one, uh, for example barium chloride plus silver nitrate so barium chloride in the, barium chloride in the solution state silver nitrate in the solution state of course barium uh, chloride sorry barium nitrate and silver chloride insoluble pressure a very good example is production of ammonia it's N2 plus H2 it's a higher pressure very much and uh, seriously high pressure involved catalyst examples we already discussed previously any of the examples you can give potassium chlorate decomposition or H2O2 decomposition your choice no problem define photochemical reaction that means the chemical reaction involving that means the chemical reaction which brings or rather which is carried out or which takes place in the presence of light that means photons the photon the light carries photons the photons are bringing out the photons are carrying out this chemical reaction and hence called photochemical reaction you can give photosynthesis the electrochemical reaction once again chemical reaction brought out by passing in the presence of electric current or by passing electricity one example of each course Give an example of each of the following chemical changes. Following chemical changes. All right. So the question is for an uh, example of the following chemical changes. Silver photochemical reaction involving silver salts. It's already discussed. Photochemical reaction involving water. That is, of course, photosynthesis, carbon dioxide plus water. It gives for glucose plus, plus, glucose plus, oxygen plus water. So, uh, involving photochemical reaction involving water, it's glucose, I'm sorry, formation of glucose from carbon dioxide, it's in this reaction. A reaction involving blue solution, of course, copper sulfate plus iron, copper sulfate is a blue solution. Formation, and you could give ferrous sulfate plus copper, turning to green. Formation of green, dirty, green precipitate, of course, ferrous sulfate plus sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide, you will get it, it forms ferrous hydroxide plus sodium sulfate or ammonium sulfate ferrous hydroxide is dirty green precipitate two gases combined to form white solid two gases of course ammonia is one of the one gas hydrogen chloride is one gas the two gases they combine to form ammonium chloride they do form they, do, uh, they form ammonium chloride and hence uh, ammonium chloride is a white solid and that's the question answered a reaction the color change is noticed there are many reactions so there where you can change right color where you can write such to, uh, color changes taking place uh, for example you can write uh, uh, you can write the copper sulfate example with copper sulfate plus iron giving ferrous sulfate to green solution so from blue to green solution formation Another example, you can show another uh, a reaction where you can give example, you can give that is a uh, lead nitrate solution, a lead nitrate solution, or rather, don't give them uh, lead nitrate solution plus, you can give uh, barium chloride, so from a transparent to a white PPT. That's a color change taking place. You can also go for heating, heating ammonium dichromate if you want, you're interested. You can give heating of ammonium dichromate. Ammonium dichromate is an or is an orange solid. When you heat it, it gives a green, dirty green precipitate of chromic oxide. So that's also a color change. So many reactions involves color changes, reactions there. So you can give anyone of your choice. Rather chemical reaction with the following changes are observed gases evolved, previously discussed. Color changes notice that also been discussed. Precipitate form discussed and physical state is changed. Now that this one, physical state change, that means either it will from solid to liquid or it will from liquid to gas or from gas to liquid. So physical state change, there are many reactions. So simple one, hydrogen is a gas, oxygen gas, and hydrogen burns in oxygen. It forms water, that means water vapor, liquid water. Or if you're not interested, no, because from gas it forms gas only you may you may go for carbon plus sulfur carbon is a solid sulfur is solid when they're heated it forms carbon dioxide with some liquid
All right. Coming to the last question of exercise 2A. Last question of exercise 2A, that is silver nitrate. Silver nitrate. Coming to the last question. Silver nitrate solution is kept in colored bottles. Silver salts are photosensitive. And hence, to prevent the decomposition of silver salts, it's kept in colored bottles. Molybdenum is used in the manufacture. Ammonia production involves nitrogen and hydrogen. So, uh, nitrogen and hydrogen. So, uh, nitrogen is a very inert gas. So, it does not react very easily. And hence, molybdenum facilitates. Molybdenum is not the catalyst, rather it's a promoter. Now, apart from the catalyst, to still to facilitate, to accelerate the reaction, molybdenum is used to reduce the time taken to produce ammonia. Blue solution of copper sulfate changes to cream when a piece of iron is added. This has already been explained earlier. Let's give reasons. So, iron is pretty reactive in copper, it displaces copper from copper sulfate to form ferrous sulfate solution which is cream in color. Now the give reasons, now there are, uh, you will be provided, I will be providing you uh, some study materials where certain questions will be are answered. That means certain questions are answered where from where you can, you will be able to identify, you will be able to understand that how to write a, uh, write, uh, write a question or to approach a question and to give a very uh, compact, foolproof answer. All right. All right. So uh, certain questions from the exercises have been selected by me only and that has been uh, solved and you, uh, it will be provided to you as one of the study materials. All right. Okay. Now, moving on to the next exercise now, that is exercise coming to the next, that is exercise 2B. The first, we are having the following, complete the following statements, that is a fill in the blanks given. As you can see, the chemical change involving iron and hydrochloric acid illustrates a displacement reaction. In the type of reaction called dash, two compounds exchange their positive and negative radicals, that's called double displacement reaction. A catalyst either promoter or inhibitor. A catalyst, sorry, a catalyst either accelerates, a catalyst either accelerates or decelerates the rate of a chemical change but it itself remains unchanged at the end of the reaction. Once again, I repeat, a catalyst either accelerates or decelerates, or you can write promotes or retards the rate of a chemical reaction or change, but it itself remains unchanged at the end of the reaction. The next question, when hydrogen burns in oxygen, water is formed, when electricity is passed through water, hydrogen and oxygen are given out. Name the type of chemical changes involved in the two cases. The first case, the first is electricity passed through hydrogen, uh, hydrogen burns in oxygen to form water. This is combination reaction. The second, electricity passed through water to form hydrogen and oxygen that is decomposition reaction. So how will you write hydrogen burns in oxygen, case one, hydrogen burns in oxygen to give water. This is combination reaction. Case two, water is, or other electricity is passed through water to form hydrogen and oxygen. Answer, this is decomposition reaction. That's it. Moving on to the next question, explain, giving one example for each of the following chemical changes. Double decomposition, you will write the definition, of course, of double decomposition. These two compounds react together where the, uh, the uh, cations and anions are exchanged 
with each other of each and individual compound or exchange and to form two new compounds by the exchange of the cations and anions. That's called the double decomposition reaction. Examples, of course. These sort of questions, examples must. And it's given in the question, giving one example. Thermal dissociation. As I discussed previously also, there are two forms, thermal decomposition and thermal dissociation, a very preliminary, very primary difference. Thermal decomposition is breaking of substance by application of heat and which cannot be reversed back by physical methods and thermal dissociation breaking of substance or breaking of compounds to form new compounds but if the conditions are reversed the original substance will be re retrieved back that's a thermal dissociation so one's a reversible reaction one is an irreversible reaction reversible reaction the definition i've already given previously so there is, I don't think it needs to be discussed again. It's a clear definition I've given you. You can, you can follow my videos earlier to get the definition. Displacement reaction has also been discussed. A clear definition given along with the structure or the scheme of the example, how the displacement reaction is along with the prominent example. The next question coming is, what is synthesis? What is synthesis? Synthesis is when two elements combine together to form one substance it's called synthesis. We need to give an example. Iron plus chlorine gives a very chloride. Carbon plus sulfur, carbon plus sulfide. So, so these are pretty synthesis reaction. What kind of chemical reaction is this synthesis? It's a combination reaction, of course. The next coming, decomposition brought about by heat is known as thermal decomposition. What's the difference between thermal decomposition and thermal dissociation? Just now I explained this point, the difference between thermal decomposition and thermal dissociation. Define neutralization. Give three applications of the neutralization. Neutralization when an acid reacts with a base to form salt and water. It's called, then such reactions are called as the only products such reactions are called so acid and base react together to form salt and water as the only products such reactions are called neutralization reaction of course we'll give an example simple example sodium hydroxide along with uh, hydrochloric acid gives sodium chloride plus water so, and please to mention which one is the salt and which one is the acid base and water Three applications of neutralization reaction. It's a very, three, there are numerous applications. For example, if you're suffering from acidity inside your stomach, acidity, we do take antacids, right? So, antacids, for the words I've discussed previously also, antacids are opposite of acid, that's a base. So, opposite of acid, that's a base. So, you can, uh, we give antacids, and hence, the situation for excess of the acid is being neutralized and we suffer less okay moving on to the next application that is um, if a bee gets stings someone person then it, it it hurts a lot why because of the formic acid which are, which has been released by the bees from the bee sting it penetrates the skin and it gives a burning sensation for which the pain takes place occurs now, under such circumstances, if we use clay lime or uh, caustic so or caustic soda or potash, so uh, milk of magnesia, so such situations can be neutralized. So the acidity or uh, the formic acid is being get, it's, it's getting neutralized by the caustic soda or milk of magnesia or slake lime, and hence this neutralization releases the. Is relieved, it gives relief from the pain. The next we are having that is you can give as an example or other application of neutralization reaction that is, oh, if a sudden sp sp accidental spilt of acids on skin or clothes, we will use ammonium hydroxide as a base to neutralize the effect of the acid accident which have taken place all right moving on to the next question what do you understand by hydrolysis once again when 
a salt is uh, uh, reacts with water to form its corresponding uh, acid and a base. A salt or, or any salt when it reacts with water or gets dissolved in water to form its corresponding base and acid, which can be uh, of the co of combination of a weak uh, of uh, either a weak acid or a strong acid or a weak base and a strong base. Now such reactions are called hydrolysis. Coming to the next ferric chloride is acidic while sodium carbonate is basic. Ferric chloride is a salt. When it hy gets hydrolyzed, it forms ferric hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Now ferric hydroxide is a weak acid, sorry, it's a weak uh, weak base while hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and hence the overall solution becomes partially acidic. Sodium carbonate similarly, sodium hydroxide is the form of hydrolysis it will form sodium hydroxide and carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a weak acid and sodium hydroxide is a strong base and hence the overall solution becomes alkaline or basic. What is the composition? Support your answer, it's already discussed previously. So the type of reactions lead to the following represent and balance. Of course, the reactions are not balanced. You should balance each of those reactions. And I start from the first. Chlorine plus Cl2 plus KBr is a displacement reaction. Number B, once again, the displacement Fe plus Heo so is a displacement reaction. AgO, it's a decomposition reaction. PbO2 plus SO2, it's a combination reaction. Silver nitrate plus NaCl, it's a double displacement reaction or we can also go for a precipitation reaction potassium chlorate it's a decomposition reaction h2o2 is a once again decomposition reaction potassium nitrate plus sulfuric acid it's a double displacement reaction copper oxide hydrogen copper plus it's a simple displacement reaction copper carbonate it's a decomposition reaction it forms copper oxide or rather, sorry, it's calcium carbonate giving calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide a decomposition reaction. And ammonium chloride forming ammonia plus hydrogen chloride gas. Once again, it's a decomposition reaction. Moving on to the next exercise, I hope, till this much. Now, exercise the questions. I have all the questions I've discussed, and it is pretty clear with you all. Okay? Now, once again, now, moving on to the final exercise that is exercise 2c of this chapter the final exercise of this chapter the first question is say the main characteristics of chemical reaction now characteristic there are four characteristics one is evolution of a gas one of the characteristic formation of precipitate one of the characteristics change of uh, color is one of the characteristics so these are um, evolution of heat or energy it's one of the characteristic four characteristics given in your book, along with that, at least one example you should give. Define exothermic and endothermic changes. Of course, we know that exothermic reaction means the reaction in which heat is evolved. Heat is given out from the reaction mixture. Endothermic reactions or changes, reaction in which heat is absorbed from the surroundings into the reaction mixture. Get you examples, of course, we can give example carbon plus oxygen burning of carbon gives a lot of heat burning of uh, rather uh, what should I say uh, formation of um, carbon disulf no that's carbon disulfide it is uh, let's consider ammonia production that's also an exothermic reaction the next is we're having endothermic reaction so Endothermic reaction, we have to give heat. Endothermic reaction are reactions are where uh, we are uh, where it absorbs heat. So exothermic reactions, sorry, exothermic reactions, it generates a lot of heat. So what should I say? Decomposition, decomposition when um, uh, firecrackers burn, it gives a lot of heat. Endothermic reactions, examples, uh, for example, endothermic reactions, supplying, when we, if we, we need to heat carbon, uh, iron plus, uh, all the thermal decomposition reactions, where normally in the initial state it's a endothermic reaction. 
Still, the effects of endothermic and exothermic reactions affects endothermic reactions reduces or decreases the surrounding temperature and exothermic reaction increases the surrounding. Surrounding means the environmental temperature. So surrounding or the environmental temperature, exothermic reaction increases. Endothermic reaction reduces or decreases the surrounding or the environmental temperature. Give an example of the reaction the following are involved evolution of heat, absorption or some same thing, evolution of heat, exothermic reaction, absorption of the endothermic reaction. High pressure is required, of course, ammonia production. That's a very good example. 200 to 900 atmospheres, pressure required. Define photochemical reaction. You can give the decomposition of sylvanite, silver nitrate, or formation of glucose as photosynthesis reaction, electrochemical reaction previously discussed. Give an example is, of course, examples must. Once again, I repeat each and every time I'm telling you examples, examples are must. It's compulsory in these in chemistry, wherever you may find examples are very, very, very important. The next is given example of each of the following chemical changes or change, a reaction involving change of state. So as I said, carbon plus sulfur giving carbon disulfide. So carbon and sulfur both are solid and carbon disulfide is a liquid. Formation of precipitate as it's, it's been, been discussed previously also. An exothermic and endothermic reaction involving carbon as one of the reactants. So exothermic reaction, carbon plus, uh, sorry, exothermic reaction, uh, you, can, you can write as um, uh, photosynthesis, it, it gives out heat. An endothermic reaction, it's probably carbon plus, oxygen forming carbon dioxide. A reaction where color change is noticed a reaction where color change is noticed, of course, carbon, copper, sulfate plus iron, you can give this example from blue to green. What do you understand the chemical reaction? Already discussed previously. Complete the reaction that's sodium chloride plus silver nitrate, it's silver chloride plus sodium nitrate. Lead nitrate plus Ki gives lead iodide plus PBI2 plus potassium nitrate. Copper carbonate, it's giving CuO plus CO, CO2, lead nitrate. Lead oxide, PBO plus NO2 plus O2. Ammonia plus O2, it's give NO nitric oxide plus O2, sorry, o nitric oxide plus H2O. Okay, what do you observe? Once again, observation means you will, I, I told repeatedly many times earlier also, observation means or you can see the specific changes taking place, but not the chemical reaction. Lead nitrate heated, uh, yellow residue forms with the evolution of a reddish brown gas. Chlorine water is exposed to sunlight, a greenish yellow gas evolves. Hydrogen peroxide is exposed to sunlight. Effervescence of a colorless, odorless gas takes place. H2S is passed through copper sulfate solution. A blue solution turns black with the formation of a black precipitate. Barium chloride is added sodium sulfate, a white precipitate forms. A carbonate which does not decompose on heating. A carbonate which does not decompose on heating. That is, you can go for sodium carbonate. A nitrate which produces oxygen as only gas. It's potassium nitrate or sodium nitrate. It's KNO2 plus O2. Uh, Compound to which produces carbon dioxide on heating. You can go for copper carbonate or zinc carbonate. A nitrate which produces copper carbonate or zinc carbonate. You can go for a zinc ZNO plus CO2 or CO plus O2, CO2. A nitrate which produces brown gas on heating. Lead nitrate, copper nitrate. You can go for copper nitrate. Cu, NO3, hold twice, gives copper oxide plus nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen. So with these questions, I uh, end this chapter and the com this chapter two gets over. Now it's your duty to complete or rather to do these exercises in your exercise books and as homework and do submit your homework to me uh, by emails right now. Okay, during this time, other, uh, later on your exercise books will be taken. Keep your work updated for final correction. But before that, submit your homework. And 
after that and along with this you may get some assignments also you may get some assignments also along with this um, with different questions as your additional practice session related to this chapter or the chapter one so till then I'll uh, stop over here and thank you